position a little bit faster. You did the right thing, just do it a little bit faster. You were great. You almost had that game won. Just stay focused. It's just tied right now. We're going into Bonnie Research Station for game three. Two player map here. Scott Goldbees as well. It's got three of them. Let's see if Solar takes advantage of them. And we will go ahead in the series. Down here in the south, in the blue, our Protoss player just barely taking that game. It was a wild ride. It was SOS. Here he is, dollar sign with dollar sign. And his opponent to the north is Solar. Perhaps um, naming himself after the energy source. <laughs> Solar. Such a, um, I don't know. The, the word is supposed to be solar, like solar energy, yeah. solar power, but I don't know. I, I think it was you who told me that he wanted his name to be said Solar. So I think that's the way you're supposed to pronounce his name. Yeah. I think I, that's what That's, that's what the I way heard. we've been doing it for so long, so <laughs> I hope it's correct. Um, yeah, well, people around the world say different players' IDs uh, differently. Like uh, some people call Puma, Puma. and uh, some Really? People, yeah. I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> Some people also uh, call T.Y. Ty. Yeah. Um, although that seems to have finally come to an end. I think at Home Story Cup 10, it was like a, a, finally a, some sort of agreement of like, hey, that's not I mean, his, that's his initials. His name is his Everybody CMC. like wrote a contract down. They signed it. They're saying, okay, that is not allowed anymore. Look at the positioning on this base. Yeah, this is like a hidden base, but it's not where you would expect it. This is a mind game. This is Solar saying, hey, I've taken a gold base. Overreact, look for it, go scout somewhere that's not my main. Do you think he's gonna take his third base at the pocket or to connect these bases? Because that's like that's what I'm wondering next, because there's advantages to both both ways of handling the situation. I think he might try to take the natural just because um, You mean the outside yeah, base? The the outside, yeah, the yeah. outside natural because it'll link them together by creep. I think you almost have to do that. Because once SOS does get the scout down, it's gonna be like Oh, it's all the way out there. I can just punish this. I'm a Protoss player. When you put down a pylon over there, it's all good. Um, yeah. But SOS, or even go like Stargate, punish the fact that you can't get that many queens over there, that much uh, air defense. And SOS, he uh, does scout the pool, and he seems to think that uh, the next phase is coming up here at least. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's reasonable to expect. I was thinking it might actually cause the base to make the pocket after just because it was blocked here. But there he goes. Now what's really cool about this is if he can hold on to these bases and link them all by creep, the fourth base is so free. Like, you could take it without any worries. Uh, there's nothing to worry about there. It's not any closer to the process at the safest location possible. Um, in the later on game where you've got to be worried about taking something like this. This is where SOS gets really confused. The funny part of this game, he's like, where's your base? It's not there. And he's going to come over to this other goal, and he's going to be like, well, it's not there, so it must be over there. Yeah, it's not there either. It's over here. For sure. Um, I just had a funny thought. You know, uh, for referees that stand behind these players in the booth, they also don't know what's going on in the game. They only have <laughs> the information that SOS has. How entertaining must it be in situations like this to be like, oh my god, like you're the ref as well, you're watching like, <laughs> that piece. You're just enjoying it as a spectator, you yeah. know? You can't see both sides, you can only watch one view. That's actually a really interesting thought. Because all the referees at this point must be pretty well versed with the game because they sit behind the oh, players yeah. and watching it, and they are referees of the game, so... You wouldn't be in that booth as a Kespa referee for StarCraft 2 unless you enjoyed the game. It was funny, I just looked back at SOS's face and to see how frustrated he looked. He looked pretty annoyed, but... I saw the referee standing behind him, and I was like, I wonder what's going through the ref's head. He's like, come on, He's <laughs> like, come on, man, find it. This is really important. I wonder if the refs have, like, are, like, fans of certain players. It's like, can I ref on Friday? Because SOS is playing. I, I want to ref SOS. SOS and I want to watch maybe him Maybe touch him, you know. I want to ask him if he's ready and him to say <laughs> yes to me. <laughs> you want to use that tool to see if there's any metal parts on their body? I want to tell him 
He needs to put his sound blockers on. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to hear my voice directly. It's going to be an Oracle build. This is the most common follow-up to hidden base builds because they're far away. The bases aren't connected by creep. Yep. You've only got one queen there in most cases. Even if you have two, sometimes you can see players lose a ton of drones. Uh, Spore Caller is pretty necessary. He's going to see this and Ooh. needs to start them. I don't know if he's... Not going to be ready in time. Yeah. That Oracle is going to get there when it's about to complete. He might be able to kill like four or five drones with this initially here. Second Oracle on the way as well. It's Overlord. Did it job, but is the reaction quick enough? Here it comes. He's it going right away, though. I'm not wasting time. Drone's being pulled away here. Second queen coming in here is really going to help out in that defense. It's going to buy enough time for the Spore to finish at this base, and he can't really commit there. Um, even with no queen, it's just going to be too tough to actually get those kills. Yeah. Something we uh, see oftentimes are the players who win the first game and lose the second game is they go back to the exact build that they did in the first game, just like tailor to the map a bit. I think we may see that out of Solar here. We're already seeing two Evo Chambers coming down. We saw in the last game he went for one plus one melee and plus one armor, and that's what he does here. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he just plays the same exact style that worked on Echo. It worked on Echo. Uh, it almost worked on that last game as well. Or oh, that was Echo, sorry. I'm like, I was, no, yeah, there's Spurring Last game, game was Coda. No, I know, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> My brain just shut like, down for a Whoa, second. did we go on a time travel? I mean, no, no, we are on game three, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> that last game really messed with me, man. That was, that was, that was wonky, man. Plus the banelings game one. That's the definition one, like, of wonky. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, Solar's just going to play the same abilities in game uh, one. Exactly what I was talking about. Baneling nest on the way. Will it be scouted? Doesn't really matter that much. Um, it's not going to go, oh, God, banelings. It's going to kill me. I mean, he did do one attack with them, which with these links here, you could absolutely do that again. But well, it's just not like that alarming. You just pull your probes away and yeah. the bandings blow up and or you force field them off because all the sentries are exactly where they need to be. Just paying attention to looking straight there. Gonna force away those links for now. Free spread here, pretty pretty good towards uh, the center of the map, towards that like, gold base. Yeah, it, it's decent. The one thing I'd say, it's not very thick. It's just one line going towards the middle. He doesn't have his uh, third and second bases connected yet. Yeah. That small passageway. It's almost connected. Not quite. There's the uh, Spire and Infestation Pit. No Banelings made. Just the Nest. Not one yet. About to finish. Yeah, not yet. I almost feel like if you're going to do this, you might want to get Overlord drops, too. Yeah. It's expensive, it's a but later on. Of course, yeah, but it's it's also something that the, the Protoss rarely ever deals with against the Zerg these days, you know? Yeah, we saw it, like, um, who was doing it in, like, the open seasons of GSL? I want to say, like, July Zerg, maybe Nest a little bit, and possibly mm. Fruit Dealer were, like, doing that back in the day. It's like, oh, God, those are a bunch of overlords. They must have bailings in them, and it's really hard to blink back and, and micro. But yeah. if you're good at it, if you've practiced it, it Remember becomes easy. Remember when they used to drop bailings on Colossi? Yeah. People were like, we can't deal with Colossi. we got to use drop bailings. That's one of the fun parts of RTS is in the people discovering new strategies, trying out new things. You get crazy stuff like that. But well, it was considered for a while by uh, Korean pros that bailings were where the end all be all because they do a lot of damage and they and it's splash. So all you have to do is hit things with them. So the best way to play is to figure out a way to hit things with banelings. This is like in the beta, right? But um, and if you look at Chinese players, man, they thought banelings were god. They worshipped them, um, and uh, they still do in ZVZ. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> a big warp in over here, six zealots, and uh, you know what? With these links here, I think that's not enough. He's gonna need some more. Yeah. Um, very oh, nice okay. scouting and preparation from Solar. He keeps one ling, or two lings rather, one towards the SOS's gold, one towards his own gold there on the right side of the map. Sees the war person coming, is in position to stop it. There are a few banelings out here, Valdez. Five more on the way. Does have a lot of force field energy here, but... An overlord drop, though. An overlord <laughs> drop now. That's the thing. That's the problem. Not today. He's just so timid to engage on creep, though, against Baneling Speed Banes, even with force fields. If he make, makes a mistake, you're going to lose all your expensive sentries. All it takes is three Banes getting in there. Lights out. There's one Muta on the map. No water. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ultra's Cavern very quickly here. 
again, like you were saying, continuing the theme of, of this, uh, this series so far. Gigantic counterattack here from Solar. He needs that force field. There it is, just barely. Well, these Banes are going to do quick work with these Zealots. Oh, and the sentry. Well, if they hit him. <laughs> wow, that was uh, really sad. The Banes are like, I'm sorry. I thought I was here to kill the Zealots. What are you guys doing? Oh, boy. Uh -oh. No block here. Look at this. Go hit those probes. No, that's not what I do. <laughs> those Banelings did all the wrong things in the... In I'm really sad about it. Yeah. There's still not much defense there in the main, just one cannon. Here Big attack here. Yeah, SOS doesn't want to let this go too late this time. He wants to end it. He doesn't want Solar to play comfortably in that late game style. Trying to trade here with some Banelings and looking at the army so far of Solar, it's not too buff, to be honest. He's got a lot of Lings and uh, Investors. Yeah, the Investors are really important. He's got 2-2. Two, two. So SOS only has a plus two attack, of course, because that's a What is point. going on here in the back? 15 probes have gone down. And here come the investors bungling this army. Splash damage being dealt to everything. Even though it's only a little bit, it's enough to slow this down to start hurting this. Uh, Archon's literally the worst target in the entire game for Bailings, but if you hit them enough times, you slow them down, the Ultralists pop out, and you can actually start to take fights. SOS is having some trouble here. He really is. Solar may want to take that fight. He's done so much economic damage in that back door. 20 probes go down. SOS is on 54 right now. It's going to be a while uh, before he can even take a fourth base, you know, and get that saturated, but we won't have the probes to do it. This is why that, you know, it was really cool to take the fourth base of the back door expansion, because your fourth is exposed. If you lose it, it's okay. Ooh. You've got more mining in the main. Cool dodge there, as your ooh indicated. <laughs> And uh, this is an engagement there. All the Pros units are clumped and stuck together by Fungals. It's exactly what Solar wants. SOS had like 20 Zealots in there. They all got blown up by like four Banelings. Yep, the Banelings are there to kill the Zealots so they're not blocking the Ultralist. We figured it out. That uh, Oracle's gonna go down. This is this is, starts to look exactly like game one because mm. we saw SOS think he could take another engagement just there where he stayed or, you know, in this case, he was kind of forced to stay. Could have used his mothership core to recall, but didn't. And then he loses his army. Now he's down in bases, can't take any more bases, and he's up against a weird comp that he's trying to counteract. By the time he does, yeah. either he's going to get blinding clouded like in the last game, or perhaps it's going to be a Broodlord transition. He obviously is having so much trouble dealing with this composition, which is why I love the fact that Solar went back to it in game three. Whatever worked in game one, especially when it looks like your opponent doesn't know exactly what to build or how to counter it, just make it again, man. Especially if it's something new, like something different that we don't see very often. I would love to see a bunch of High Templars in here. You know, just shut down the Fungals. Even put them in Warp Prisms, like try to go in there and get a bunch of uh, feedbacks down onto the Investors and then engage. Then you, you know, at least can, you know, get your Archons in the front at reposition your army so you can deal with the Banelings and yeah. just not have it all just stuck in one place and not be able to micro. I mean, in an, in an ideal world, absolutely. And I think it would be good for him to experiment with this. Um, making a Warp Prism right now is, he has one. I mean, dropping dropping some Templar in there, I think it's a good idea. It's just, it's difficult, right? But if he could do that, it's like putting Ghost in a drop ship to snipe High Temple. We see that in uh, TVP. Yeah, I mean, the Warp Prism thing is, is not actually necessary, but you know, it would be an added, an added touch, at least. It'd be cool. I mean, his army is very strong, but if he loses it even one time, it's it's game over. He needs to make sure his mothership core does not get too far away, because he will need it for recalls. Oh boy, it's very true. That he, one immortal. Sorry, immortal. He's not gonna be able to save that recall immediately. God, I mean, those banelings were touching the blue units before they disappeared and went away. <laughs> Here comes a drop, but Solar's more than ready for it. He's gonna try to go for the Banelings here. That's not a good idea. Because, as you know, Banelings do splash damage. <laughs> so that's Spenu's splash damage. Not bad. He's like, oh, he just backs off. The best way to deal with Banelings is to warp two DTs and make them into an Archon next to the Banelings. All the Banelings crash into the Morphing Archon. It's not very efficient. <laughs> We're finally seeing SOS add in a bunch of high Templar. He's also got Storm. Uh, Storm on the Banelings and the Lings is also a good idea. He tried to do it towards the end of the game number one. It didn't quite work out. I think it was too late. And it may just be the case here again. It may just be too late. 
the attack from Solar is imminent. It's at the fourth base. He does not want to let SOS take that fourth base. This is just, I'm in awe by this. This is so cool. Okay, that warp prism, or rather the uh, mothership core, out of position. Storms go down. Feedbacks go down on the Vipers. Very important here. No blinding cloud except the one on the left. But there's already so many units doing damage over there. He needs to join them up to deal with these Ultras on the right. Zealots coming to try to trap and surround these units. Yeah, you know the main lane hits were actually really, really bad there on a bunch of Immortals in, in the front. Solar throwing a ton of his units away, but here we go. The DTs? Immortals yeah. protecting in the back. There's no vision for those DTs, as you did mention. Yep. But will it be enough? The DTs doing so much to kill those queens on the back to stop the transfuses, but with the Lings, there's just too many of them. They eventually push through, and they've got you know, if you can bring him over there, he's got overseers to, to spot for the DTs. Yeah. And the other problem with this is that SOS's economy is pretty much in shambles. He desperately needs a fourth base, but just like game number one, it's so late. We're 21 minutes into this game. He has a really, really bad economy compared to Solar. Solar's immediately able to remax in nine ultras extra. And what is SOS going to be able to make? A bunch of zealots, some archons. That's going to be about it. Yeah. You can already see the supply difference here. Solar taking another base. This is um, this is really, really, really tough for SOS right now to hold on to these bases. The the lack of creep is something that he is working on. It's going to make this even harder. I feel like the best the best thing that Solar can do if he can get a little bit more space, a little bit more max. You know, I mean, rather he's maxed out. He's got like a little bit more space to work with. Is uh, to again add Broodlords into the comp. I mean, it's. The, the next logical step, as we're seeing mostly Zealot Immortal coming out, is not going to deal with the Ooh, no detection there at the back door base. That could cause some issues for Solar if he doesn't deal with it here in a bit. Banelings would be great back there. I don't think he has any. Okay, there they come in. He's got to manually detonate them, though, which is pretty tough. Okay, here we go. This could be the game-deciding fight. Zealot's over here at the front. A really good storm on those Lings. Banelings trying to roll in and crash through those shields. There's just so many Ultras here, Valdez. Even with a good position on this Protoss army. And he's trying to force his way through. Worst possible engagement, though, <laughs> for the Ultralis. It is, but it doesn't seem to matter. Solar's just got way too much stuff. And even if he trades efficiently with this, he's got an amazing economy behind it. GG. GG. Solar impressing me once again. SOS having so much trouble dealing with the style. And that may just be, you know, the thing that kills him here if Solar does the same thing going into the next set. Baneling Ultras, Ling Bling Ultra. You saw it here first on the Star League Challenger. Investors as well. Investors as well, no doubt. A couple more Vipers, a little bit of flavor. You know, sprinkle some Vipers in your comp. Get those insane blinding clouds down. This has been uh, pretty rad today, man. I, I'm yeah. kind of excited to see this more and more in the future. This may just be the best. Um, Best of five we've had so far in Challenger, I, I believe. So. Out of the six so far, really enjoying this so far. Really cool style from Solar, and a great Protoss in S.